Hello, everybody, and thank you for having us. I mean, so late, uh, yeah, at the end of DrupalCon, uh, almost. I mean, we have the sprints tomorrow. Uh, yeah, today, we are going to talk uh, about our experience to serve huge amount of data out of Drupal, or more particularly, how to uh, how to do using uh, NoSQL uh, database. Um, but before, uh, yeah, let's uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, maybe, Ankin, you can change the slide to the next one, please. Yes, uh, my name is Bouyan. Um, I'm born and raised in uh, Bulgaria, and currently I live in France, where I work as a CTO of France for uh, for uh, for uh, FFW. Um, I'm Drupal in since 2007. Uh, I mean, and since Drupal 5, actually. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach me after the session for any questions that you want to, you know, ask me. You know, I mean, any tech questions, I'm always uh, ready to answer and to uh, discuss with you. And we have Engin as well with me. Hello all. So I'm uh, Engin Ilmas, and I'm based in Berlin and work as solutions architect at FFW. I am doing Drupal since 2011. Uh, so where I started my bachelor degrees and um, yeah, right after Drupal 7 came out. Yeah, thank you Engin. Uh, let, let's go to, to the next slide. Uh, Yes, uh, as you already mentioned, we work for FFW, which is a global agency with 23 offices around the world. Uh, we're, uh, uh, yeah, we're the company which has the biggest number of Acura certified specialists worldwide. Uh, but the figure that I like most is that we have more than 350 supported projects in uh, Drupal work. And this is thankfully, uh, you know, of the fact that FFW, uh, I mean, in FFW, we managed to make the Drupal contribution part of our, our daily work, but uh, not only, you know, uh, I mean, uh, what, is, uh, what is really important, uh, I mean, is this uh, to think, you know, uh, and to believe that a day without a Drupal contribution is a wasted day. You know, uh, I believe uh, that one company can become a Drupal maker company only when the people in the company have maker's mindset at this first place. So if you work in a company, which is a taker now, you can change that, you know, it's really up to you. But yeah, this is great thing, but uh, let's go back to, uh, to uh, our main topic today. Uh, this is our agenda for today's presentation. First, I will talk about, uh, you know, what problems we can solve with NoSQL database. And then my colleague Engin will give you some hands-on experience. Uh, moving forward, uh, as many of you uh, might know, Drupal can, uh, can be extremely database intensive and very often not uh, the web servers, but the database behind becomes a bottleneck. So the three main reasons why we need NoSQL, either you have a big number of records in the database, or you have a big number of uh, read and write operations on the database, or most likely uh, you have both reasons in the same time, you know. Somebody uh, from, you, from you might ask, but yeah, we should be able to solve this problem with MySQL uh, as well, right? Yeah, my answer will be yes, you can try until at some extent, but on what cost, you know? Um, in fact, the infrastructure cost for, for solving the same problems with MySQL uh, versus NoSQL could differ like a 10 times in favor of a NoSQL solution. You shouldn't uh, uh, understand me wrong for sure. I mean, relational database are great. I mean, Drupal is not going, uh, I mean, shouldn't go away from the relational database. They solve particular problems. But when it's a matter uh, for a big data, you know, a big amount of transaction, NoSQL based no scale databases are really the way to go. Uh, and it's like this because uh, they're designed to handle exactly these type of scenarios. Um, yeah, but let's take a look at a real case scenario in order to understand the problem better. Uh, we had to integrate Drupal to a huge PIM system. I mean, for this uh, who doesn't know what it, what PIM is, uh, it stands from a product information uh, management system. And usually uh, it is the single source of truth of the product data of many companies. The integration requirements were a few, but quite important. Uh, so uh, more than a, a million product entities that should be updated on a daily basis. The web the web application has to be available 24 seven. Um, 
because it is uh, uh, used worldwide. So performance degradation, you know, during the night or something like this, uh, this is uh, this wasn't really uh, an option. Um, you know, easily, um, yeah, this is in uh, quotes, uh, to be able to add a new product attribute if needed, you know, if we have to change the schema of the product database. And of course, to keep all the, you know, Drupal content management the Drupal content mesh and SEO capabilities uh, in 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 uh, in uh, place. So yeah, uh, very interesting task. You know uh, how to how to handle it. I mean, uh, with all these requirements, uh, there is one obvious solution. You know, the Drupal solution. Uh, I mean, the very well known. Use Drupal migrate module to import the data on a daily basis. You know, implement incremental updates in order to reduce the number of daily uh, imported products. You know, in fact, this solution will tick many of the checkboxes, but uh, not all, you know. Uh, so think about how much time could take to reimport 1 million products because of some reason. It could be like a schema update or could be something that we did uh, wrong update or, or it could be a massive uh, update of the, of the database, you know, really. Uh, many reasons, you know. Okay, so do not do the math. Uh, I mean, I will tell you. So if you import like an average 50 products per second, this could take like a, almost six hours. In case if you have like a very serious and, and this is only in case if you have very exp expensive infrastructure out there, you know. Uh, I mean, it could be much, much worse, you know. Uh, note that one product could, could be uh, consisted usually from multiple Drupal entities like Node, Media, Terms, I mean, could be many things. Um, so during the import, the web application database will be heavily bombarded, which will cause major performance degradation. So this solution, it is not a good option. So uh, yeah, uh, so we started to think about another solution, you know, uh, so there is a big data, so we need no SQL. Obviously, keeping the data into the Drupal MySQL database uh, wasn't an option, so we started thinking about external storage. But in the same time, we needed to keep all Drupal goodies as SEO related content, you know, uh, etc. All these things which are coming, uh, you know, uh, uh, in Drupal uh, out of the box. Uh, it turns out that the solution is out there, and there is a module for it. You know, I mean, yeah, I know it sounds trivial, but it was true. You know. Um, it turns out that the Drupal core entity API uh, is database agnostic and can work uh, uh, practically with any data external source. I mean, not the relational database, like uh, everything. So uh, we took the advantage of all these findings and we connected uh, the PIM system and Drupal via Elasticsearch used as a middle layer. Now uh, I will hand over, uh, you know, uh, the word to uh, Engin, so uh, he can give us more details about what exactly we did. So, how does it work? As Boyan just mentioned, uh, the PIM system indexes all the products and also the related downloads uh, to the for the projects to Elasticsearch. We have an index per type. Uh, so one for products and one for the downloads in Elasticsearch. And uh, before that, we defined ourselves how the index structure is basically per type. So at that time, after Boyan had the architecture for the client, uh, we discovered the external entities module, which was a great fit in this case, as it allows us to have the external storage, like in this case, uh, Elasticsearch, but still use Drupal's internal API because it is built on top of Drupal's entity system. So we can use what we are used to for the rest, like field API, where we can map the data from Elasticsearch to Drupal uh, fields, view modes, um, views, which would be in this case backed via Elasticsearch. So the queries will be done to Elasticsearch and the rendering part is done by Drupal. Then uh, we have also REST API where we could build um, decoupled applications based on this. Uh, also very important is Drupal's cache layer. So we don't need to send for every request, uh, request to Elasticsearch. We basically cache the entities um, locally in Drupal in, in memory and uh, can also use 
front end caches like um, yeah, Varnish. Um, the module uses plugins for the storage implementation. So in order to use it with Elasticsearch, uh, the only thing we needed to was to create a storage plugin for Elasticsearch and we were ready to go. Uh, the plugin itself was, is using um, other contrib modules in the Drupal ecosystem like Search API and Elasticsearch connector to do the uh, queries and requests and uh, yeah, build the queries basically. Uh, the same way it would be possible um, to use other external databases which offer a CRUD API like Redis, MongoDB, Dy DynamoDB, and so on. So the question is why we took Elasticsearch. The first of all, Elasticsearch is fast. It is an outstanding search engine. So we benefit also a lot from its capabilities as a search engine for the product search or a download search. So we are able to build complex queries which are still executed pretty fast. It has an extendable schema with a lot of field types, even with support with, for nested objects, which helps a lot for products with hundreds or thousands of different attributes. We can also do some data transformation during indexing uh, to basically influence how the data should be searched and find, found. Um, so there are a lot of filters and tokenizers available out of the box. And very important, um, the majority of the PIM system has basically an integration out of the box for Elasticsearch. However, there were also some challenges uh, during the implementation which can be or can't be solved um, easily. So the first thing is cache invalida invalidation. As I said, we used uh, Drupal's internal cache, uh, entity cache, and um, we need to know basically when something has changed in the, um, in the elastic search. So for this, we introduced a cache invalidation queue. Um, which is basically an ADS simple queue, uh, which is filled by the PIM once in uh, a new product is or an existing product updated so successfully indexed in, uh, in Elasticsearch. And Drupal is processing that queue in order to invalidate the internal cache for the entity, but also thanks to the purge module for the front-end cache. Okay, so we solved the problem for product detail pages, uh, but, uh, and also references and other content to those products. But what about listings? So we could in theory uh, invalidate every time when there is a one change for an entity also invalidate the listing cache, but um, this is also done by core, uh, by the way. But um, in a frequent use case like this, that would mean that we constantly uh, invalidate the cache for the lists and also for the search. So that's not good. Uh, what we did is we introduced for that a delayed cache invalidation. So um, we basically uh, make a mark uh, that there was a, a change in the entity and uh, in a cron job basically do at least every five minutes when there was a change and validate the um, listing cache. Uh, for sure that can be configured differently so it doesn't need to be every five minutes but that was a fit in this case. Uh, the second problem is multilingual uh, products or multilingual attributes uh, because uh, how external entities currently um, designed or implemented, it is not uh, same as one would have it with Drupal core. And so uh, there is a need for, there is some work needed basically in order to solve this issue. And the third one is the limits introduced by Elasticsearch itself. Uh, so basically one problem is for example, that it is not possible to paginate through results was more than 10K results. 
by default. Um, you can, you need to use basically the uh, scroll API, which would be necessary, for example, um, if you want to build the XML sitemap for the product. Yeah, that's it. I will hand over back to Boya. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Yes, uh, conclusion and then time for questions, but first the conclusion. So the conclusion is very simple, you know, Drupal obviously is great, you know, the Drupal community is great as well. But apart from this, what uh, I would be, I mean, we would be happy if you remember from uh, this presentation, there is a solution out there uh, which allows to your Drupal application to handle any data load, you know, of any size. So just remember this and we will be very happy. So now we can go to the next slide and the Q&A session. If there is any questions, I don't, oh, is there are questions actually? Uh, no questions. Okay, yeah. Let's wait a little bit more. We have like a four more minutes. I see the discussion chat here. I mean, yeah, I see some people using similar solution. That's great. Okay. 30 more minutes about uh, seconds uh, or if not, uh, you can, I will wish you a very nice evening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I understand, uh, yeah. F status, yeah, th this is just sharing experience. It is not a question. I'm just waiting uh, about in the Q&A part, but yeah, obviously there is no questions. Oh, one question from Tassos. Uh, what do you think uh, may be potential limitation of, uh, of uh, this approach? Well, I mean, depends uh, how big your data is going obviously as you can see here even uh, elastic searches like a bulletproof always you know think about big data we hit some limits you know uh, i mean the limits that we can hit are infrastructure limits i mean for instance we use uh, um, amazon uh, avs uh, services about elastic search about some other bits and uh, these are coming with uh, some limitations, you know, there is no like a free lunch, you know. So the limitations are infrastructure limitations. So think about it. Uh, question from Atanas. Uh, is it possible uh, this solution to be implemented with SOAR? Uh, absolutely, yes. I mean, uh, SOAR, Elasticsearch, uh, yeah, they are, uh, I mean, similar. I mean, I don't know. I don't say, say the same, but yeah, absolutely, you can do uh, you can do, you can do this with SOAR. I mean, uh, the decision we took uh, Elasticsearch actually there are a few, but one of them was that the PIM uh, system, which was PIM Core. Uh, I mean, uh, they used uh, I mean they had like an Elasticsearch connector, and this is why we choose uh, Elasticsearch. Another question from Tobias: uh, When do you use uh, Drupal entity cache for external entities? Isn't this data stored? Uh, in uh, Drupal's MySQL database. Uh, actually, in fact, no entity cache, you can configure it to be stored in, a, in, a, in the Redis or a mem cache, you know, uh, in memory. So we don't keep this data in the MySQL database, but we keep it in the memory, you know, uh, within Redis or a mem cache. Uh, next question, and actually this is the last question because uh, we are finishing, uh, you know, the time for the presentation. Uh, are there uh, open source modules available from your work? Can we elaborate on the multilingual issue? So yes, external entities. This is the module. Actually, just start playing with this module. I mean, and you, I mean, and this is what you need. You know, about the multilingual issue, I will, uh, yeah, uh, ask uh, Engin to help us because the question is, can you elaborate on the multilingual issue more? Yeah, basically, uh, there is a um, in in the issue there is an issue about that. Uh, where there is also a patch, uh, but what it does uh, is just for the REST um, plugin, which is uh, basically uh, uh, came ca comes with an external entity. And there you can basically, when you um, browse about, or when you request an entity, an external entity, it checks what the current language is and uh, gets it uh, from there. So if you want to use cache, it doesn't work. 
because then you would always um well it would most probably be work because the uh, entity uh, cache is also uh, depending on the language but um, if you want to have elastic search uh, or if you want to have a um yeah a, a storage where you uh, where it is exactly like in drupal where you load the entity and get all the languages at once it doesn't work because the data is saved um for at least for drupal for the entity api as a language undefined so yeah well it's, it's, it's it, issue. multilingual and drupal always a complex topic <laughs> can continue a uh, discussion uh, uh, after the presentation, but yeah, we are running out of time. Uh, can you go just on the next slide, please? Because these are very important slides. The sprints are tomorrow. Uh, I mean, yeah, please join them. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, let's don't waste any days, please. Uh, and finally, trivia night. Uh, yeah, this evening, join the event. Drupal is nothing about social events. Thank you very much. Thank you, Engin. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for, for, for having us. Bye-bye.